It's now been a month since I released my first game Punch a Bunch on Steam. The game spent the entire first week at the top of the popular new releases tab. It's currently sitting at 84% positive, which is honestly a lot higher than I expected and I'm absolutely thrilled so many of you like the game. After release, I looked through all the negative reviews on Steam to see what I could improve about the game. I thought I had caught most issues, but of course you all managed to find a bunch of bugs and other problems I never encountered myself. The worst bug by far is what I've started referring to as the freeze bug of death. Instantly after release, lots of people started reporting that the game would freeze after defeating the first boss, specifically here during the next opponent screen. The strange part is that nothing is happening at this moment. Like, I really mean nothing. It's not loading the next level or anything else for that matter. Only the UI animation you see playing is what's happening. That's it. And yet, everyone seems to be freezing at almost the exact same moment, right here. It really doesn't make any sense at all, and I've never, like, not once encountered this during the development of the game. Because I wasn't able to reproduce this bug myself, I had no way of troubleshooting, so the only thing I could think to do was to recreate this entire scene from scratch and remove all animations and just have it fade on, which really sucks because I was actually really proud of how all these elements were sliding in with the sound effects. Eh, well, <laughs> it seems that this did fix the problem for like 99% of you, so I guess it was worth it in the end, but it's really quite upsetting. I, I just cannot understand why this was happening. It really doesn't make any sense at all. Well, anyways, the game is still randomly freezing for a very small amount of people, but more in random places here and there, so I guess that's just how the cookie crumbles. For most people, simply reinstalling the game seems to fix this issue. But aside from bugs, the most consistent feedback is that the game is very unfair and punishing in some cases. For example, the Viking's rampage attack comes out of nowhere and is unblockable, so if you're caught in it, you may very well end up losing the fight. My thinking with this fight was that you need to manage distance with the opponent and always expect the rampage attack to show up, thus forcing you to play very defensively. But most people just found this mechanic frustrating and unfair, which I can understand. And same thing with the puppet. Its spin attack is insanely fast with almost no wind-up and also stuns you, which is even worse. Basically, some of the opponents don't have enough telegraphing for the player to have a fair chance to react. But personally, I think the most glaring issue here is that there is no way for the player to know whether an incoming attack is blockable or not. So the player has to play the opponents repeatedly and memorize all the attacks, which I agree is not fair and not really any fun either. So to fix this, I implemented a similar mechanic to Sekiro, where an alert fires off anytime an unblockable attack is about to hit you. I think this feels a lot more fair to play now, and this update received a lot of positive feedback as well, so I think I'm pretty happy with the solution. It feels a lot better. I also added a longer wind-up time to the Viking's Rampage attack so that the player has a chance to back off, and same thing with the Puppet as well. So with the added time to react and the alert, the player should have enough time to recognize that something is about to strike them. I think this is a lot better. The puppet is still a controversial topic in the Steam discussions. Some of you feel like it's way too difficult still, but I have to disagree. I mean, this is, after all, one of the last opponents in the game, and if you do learn his patterns and practice, you will be able to beat him 100% consistently. Since I made the game in Unreal Engine, it's by default munching a lot of computer power, and it doesn't exactly help that you can't change any graphical settings at all, which people weren't too happy about. <laughs> As most of you might know, the best way to improve performance is to simply lower the resolution, but for some reason the game was really prone to crashing when switching the resolution, so I decided to remove even that feature for the release of the game. <laughs> Not ideal, I know, but anyways, a similar crash would occur when alt-tabbing out of the game as well. And big thanks to my good friend Mike for finding a solution to this online. Apparently this is caused by a bug in the version of Unreal Engine I'm using, and the fix for this was to simply add this line of code into one of the game engine files. And to my pleasant surprise, this also fixed the crash when changing resolution, so I was able to add that feature back into the game as well, which really seems to have helped a lot of people with performance. Um, arenas with crowds also seem to increase lag on weaker systems, so I added an option to disable those as well, so hopefully the game is running pretty smooth now for everybody. 
And of course, some people found a way to cheese the AI by simply spamming the punch button like this, which made the game way too easy. It does require some precise timing and practice to do this, but once you get it right, it's pretty easy to beat the entire game this way. Uh, <laughs> I was actually really happy with the AI and I didn't think it was possible to cheese it, but I was wrong. So the problem is, when you take damage in the game, there's a brief window when you are unable to block, and because the AI is playing by the same rules as you are, if you get the timing right, you can keep punching and the AI is not able to block even though it's trying to. A simple solution, of course, would be to just reduce the time before the AI can block after taking damage, but that would feel like the AI is cheating, which I'm not a big fan of. So, instead, to fix this problem, I reprogrammed the AI slightly so that if it's making the decision to block, but it notices that it can't block, it will attempt to dash out of harm's way and start leaning away from the player, thus making it a little trickier to land punches during that small window when the AI can't block. I noticed that this cheese is easier to trigger if you just punch with one hand, so I also changed the game so that if you use the same hand more than twice in sequence, you'll lose whatever adrenaline you've built up as indicated by the flames around your portrait. Keeping your adrenaline high is vital to perform this cheese as it'll allow you to keep throwing fully powered strikes without ever running out of stamina. These are all very small changes that shouldn't impact how the game plays really too much, but it did seem to fix the cheese mechanic, so I think this was a pretty good solution. Of course, it's pretty easy to stunlock the earlier opponents in the game if you know what you're doing, but that's different, and it's an intentional design of the game, so I, I don't mind that. When I released the game, I had to reuse music for some bosses because I didn't have enough time to create songs for each opponent. I'm still very new to making music, so it takes me quite a while to make even just one song. I think repeating songs is okay to a certain extent, but some of them got a bit repetitive, so I've been sneaking in some more songs whenever I finish one. Here's a quick sample of some new ones. And speaking of music, I received a lot of criticism that the songs are good, but could use better mastering. Now I barely know what mastering even means, so I'm sure you're right. I thought they sounded pretty good, but then again, I'm listening to them through these headphones, so... Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see if I can improve the quality of the songs a bit, and then I'll post the full soundtrack right here on YouTube so you can listen to it. A lot of people really dislike the progression system in the game. Currently you need to collect stars in order to unlock the series after the first one, 10 stars to unlock intermediate, and 21 to unlock the pro series. And to collect stars you need to complete achievements for each opponent. My reasoning here was to force the player out of their comfort zone and give them a reason to go back and improve their skill by completing these challenges before they can move on. But most players found this tedious and very unsatisfying considering that they had just beat the previous series, which in itself is pretty hard. Some people even quit the game after realizing they needed to collect more stars to unlock the next championship, which is not good. What? Defeat Toby in 30 seconds or less? Nah, I don't think I'll ever get all the stars. There ain't no way I'm getting to intermediate. This is hard. So in the end, I decided to remove this requirement altogether. So all you have to do now is complete the previous series to unlock the next. And for those who are interested in achievements, there's still plenty of reason to complete them all, as for each challenge you get at least one new item you can wear. And there's also a little secret Easter egg if you manage to complete them all. Another common complaint is the price point. I think a lot of people expected the game to be free for some reason. I guess I can relate though. I also just hate it when they ask me for money at the store. But since fruit is not free, I have to charge for the time I've spent making this game. Jokes aside, the game is currently sitting at $15, and some people felt that it's a bit too pricey versus how much content there is in the game. Now. I can't say I totally disagree with this, I was initially thinking $10 is a fair price, but uh, just like my man Mrs. put it in this video. Nobody on Steam buys games unless they're on sale, so what you do is you charge an extra $5 for your game and then put it on sale for $5 less. Yeah, so, 15 bucks. 
My secret overall goal with this game was to sell 10,000 copies within the first year to call it a financial success and warrant me continuing my game dev journey and that might sound like a lot, but remember that I've been working for almost 3 years on this game, so if you split it out it's actually not that much in the end. After only a month though, we've almost hit that goal, so I'm very optimistic and incredibly grateful, so thanks so much to everyone who purchased the game, I really really appreciate it. And great news for all you console players out there, I'm currently working on a Switch version of the game. It'll probably be a while before it hits the stores, but rest assured, it's coming. Unfortunately, the infamous freeze bug of death was way more common on the Steam Deck than on regular PCs. This is most likely because the Steam Deck is Linux based and is emulating the game through Proton. I have no clue why this is happening, and to further the issue, not all Steam Decks seem to have this issue. For example, the game runs perfectly fine on my Steam Deck, but some people are having issues with the instruction videos not showing and other weird bugs. I've been in contact with the Steam team to try and understand what's going on. Since I don't have a dev kit, I can't debug the game on the deck, and also, like I said, the game runs perfectly fine on my deck, so I still wouldn't be able to figure out what's going on. Uh, Steam came back and deemed the game as unsupported through their official Steam Deck verification process because the game kept freezing for them. <laughs> so I asked them for any hint at all as to what might be happening. They then decided to try running the game again but through a different version of Proton and that seems to have fixed the issue. They were able to play through the game with no issues whatsoever anymore and the game is now currently classified as fully playable. And the only reason it didn't get the green check mark is because the virtual keyboard doesn't pop up automatically when you need to enter your profile name at the beginning of the game. Yeah, I'm not joking. This is literally the only reason it didn't pass as fully verified. <laughs> well, I'm really happy that they were at least able to figure out a solution. The version of Proton that they had success with is hopefully now set as the default version when you try and run the game, so you shouldn't have to do anything. But I unfortunately don't have any control over this. It's all up to the Steam team to actually set that version, so I'm trusting that they're handling it on their end. So finally, if you're on the Steam Deck, the game should now be running perfectly fine. Of course, there were loads of other fun bugs in the game right on launch, such as Toby randomly running into the air, the monk kept getting confused, Laser Bob was shooting lasers all over the place, and also, if you paused during his laser segment, the timer for the lasers would still count and turn off the lasers during the pause screen. And if you walked far enough, you could actually fall off the floor and the puppet level, and other small fun bugs like that. So a big thanks to everyone for patiently reporting bugs and giving me feedback as you were playing the game. I've been uploading new patches pretty much every single day the first week, just fixing things and improving the game as much as possible. So by now, all of these issues should be fixed. But I'm of course checking the Discord and message boards on Steam every single day to make sure that nothing new is coming up. So if you do find something, please let me know and I will fix it as soon as I can. There's been some great suggestions for other cool things that I ultimately wasn't able to add into the game, such as powered gloves that give you special abilities or getting the opponent's abilities once you defeat them. I of course agree with this, that would be really awesome, but keep in mind that it would be much harder to balance the game while having to keep in mind that the player has an arsenal of special powers available and since I'm only one person it would take a very long time for me to make all of that work properly. More maps would of course be cool as well and I could see some sort of infinity mode being fun where you just keep fighting new procedurally generated opponents until you get knocked out to see how far you can get. I'm not saying any of these things are off the table, I will keep making updates to the game and add things as they make sense, but for now I'm gonna take a well deserved break and contemplate life for a moment before diving back into game development. I'm just kidding, <laughs> I've already started doing tutorials in Godot. I'm sick of Unreal Engine, so I'm hoping to use Godot in my next game, because you know, I hate paying for stuff and Godot is free. I'm super happy to see you guys discussing bosses and sharing strategies and tips in the Steam discussions. I'm biting my tongue every day and resisting the urge to respond with tips and hints. I think it's cheating if I chime in, since I made the game. It's more fun when it's a community effort anyways, and that's exactly how I wanted the game to be, so I'm so excited to see that this is happening. Well, it's been an incredible ride. Again, thanks so much to everyone who purchased a copy of Punch a Bunch, and to all of you who didn't, I'll put the game on sale again as soon as I can so that you can pick up the game for the true price of $10, baby. So don't forget to put it in your wish list and you'll be notified next time it goes on sale. Thanks for watching my videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!